where we are. Cafe anyway. Mike's Daily Podcast. We're gonna sing you another song called Mike's Daily Podcast. It's episode 2716. 2716. The moon came out as the weekend was saying off Eater Zine, and we were enjoying the fact that the leftovers are all gone and gosh I'm fat. Wow. I had a lot I had a lot to eat at home. That was probably not the healthiest thing for me. Mike's Daily Podcast. Now it's time to open the produce door there at the bottom of the fridge and pull out Mike's a healthy thing. Daily like a squash podcast. Mushrooms. Yeah. Maybe some thyme and basil. I don't know what I'm making in my mind here, but it's going to be good. I'm sure. The last show was called Fruition because we were discussing how superhero movies all decided all at once to do a little end scene at the end of every movie to preview what was coming up in the next movie. Or so they would have us believe. It turned out more often than not, those little post-credits vignettes ended up being false and did not come to fruition. It was false advertising. And many times it appeared that the director of that particular movie was trying to make a statement of, oh, and then the next movie, I want to have this person and this person in it. So let's get George Clooney to be Batman. That's apparently somewhere at the end of the latest Flash movie, which has got all kinds of weird things they try to pull in the entire... It's It was totally lambasted by everybody, this movie. But in a way, it ends the whole DC universe nicely. To just say DC Comics inspired heroes, that's enough. Enough with the Shazam and Zachary Levi, who went to high school with my first wife, and I got to meet him. And here's today's podcast picture. Years ago, before he had that sitcom, Less Than Zero, or whatever it's called, Too Low for Zero was an Elton John song, so I think I'm... Less Than Perfect? Something like that. There was the movie, the Andrew McCarthy movie was Less Than Zero. The picture, by the way, from the last podcast picture, from the last podcast for fruition, had the beautiful Bodega Bay. And today, which I took the late great Basil the Boxer to a couple times, as I mentioned, I don't mean to repeat myself, Basil. I know I hate when people are doing their little talk radio thing and they just repeat themselves. Or when people say, again... On podcast, don't say again. Then that just means that you're just repeating yourself. Why should I listen to you? Stop it. The podcast picture for today, F episode 2716, is of the beautiful town of Pleasanton. And the leaves are turning and it looks so nice. See it at Mike's Daily Podcast.com. And it's fascinating. Natalie Portman. She is warning child stars about working in Hollywood. It was luck that I was not harmed, she said, according to the Evening Standard through Yahoo News. She has shared a word of warning to child actors. So keep this in mind if you are a parent of a child that you think, oh, they will become an actor and they will be huge in showbiz, just like Natalie Portman. Or if you are a Gen Z or millennial or an alpha, one of those, and you probably think, because it seems like every generation younger than mine, the Gen Xers, seems to think that they are entitled to have showbiz and fame. And they, they can just walk into any radio station and become the next big thing. Uh-uh. Might rip someone a new one. It doesn't happen overnight. Yes, you have, an over, you have a very healthy ego and a lot of self-confidence. Good for you. That's what you need in show business. But you look a little bit like an idiot if you take it too far. You have to have your healthy dose of realism there. Ain't life grand. Grand. It's not that you're not talented. It's not that you're six years old and you can play the violin better than Yo-Yo Ma or anybody else or the guy, uh, Charlie Daniels, 
the late great Charlie, Charlie Daniels. It just means that you are not going to follow that road to stardom that Taylor Swift did. That happened. That's lightning in a bottle. Lightning that flashes never flashes the same way, just the exact same way twice. It is all going to be different. So just be prepared for that. But that's also good news because it means your life's going to be interesting. It's going to be uniquely yours. And you are going to do great things. I'm hoping. But don't believe too much, too much the hype surrounding you. This is interesting. Wow, this is interesting. Mike Scavenger Hunt. Take it all with a healthy dose of reality. That's what my mom always tried to give me. That's why she said, finish your college. I know you want to be in radio, but why don't you do that part time while you're working in college? And that will teach you a lot about trying to make a living. And you can't make a living in radio. No, the mic tip. That's lightning in a bottle when you become something big in radio, which that happens less and less these days. News random. Because there are the Mr. Beasts of the world, which is, that's got to scare every Christian out there. Anybody who's read Revelation, my gosh. Mike's absolutely useless review. And remember, all those people on YouTube, they are clients of YouTube. Anybody, you can start a YouTube channel and you can get popular, but it's all because you're on their platform. Matthew's News. It's just like back in the day when somebody would say, hey, I want to become a big rock star. I made a record. I'm going to write a hit song. Well, then the record label owned you because they financed your first record. Awesome. And by the way, if that record flopped, you had to pay for all that money back. So now you're paying that off the rest of your life if it doesn't work out. Or they always own a piece of you and you become the biggest thing ever. Well, they still got a piece of you and they still got a profit. Ask Taylor Swift. That's exactly what... That, why do you think she redoes all her albums? Fair and unbalanced. And this is a business, probably the most business savvy celebrity we've seen in a long time. Certainly in the artistic musical world. Since I would say David Bowie, gosh, that guy was brilliant. He knew exactly what to do in the in the business. He knew it was show. It wasn't show show. It was show business. And there is. All of that as we go outside a cafe anyway Where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast Somewhere in Podcastro Valley Ton The last place on earth Just really Gotta have a healthy view And I bring all this up because I know I know some people Some young people like this That think they're the cat's pajamas Oh I love that expression Can't you imagine a little cat in pajamas Isn't that the greatest That's the best thing ever <laughs> All right, let's go. My cat, Rocky, kept me up all night. Wow, that's wow. Raw today on the podcast. Yeah, he kept running around, bringing toys, dropping on the bed, then run around. Dude, it's two in the morning, please. You're a teenager that just came back from who knows where. Don't. Enough. So she said that, Natalie Portman said she had protective parents as well as an element of luck oh yeah that's the other thing and if you're lucky don't squander the luck do not ever squander your luck ever Mike can you do the overnight shift for our radio station yes may I please have another MTV News you hear it first I I I stumbled upon something. I'm so very, very happy. I figured out a way to record the cassettes that I was talking about on the last podcast that I bought a particular item from Amazon. And I'm just telling you this because you're probably going to scroll over this and see it at some point. And when you do go shopping on Amazon, don't always buy whatever's at the top of the page. Scroll down. Scroll down. And even... Scroll down, find something way down there, put it in your shopping cart, then 
Go to the shopping cart And underneath your item It'll say Shop for similar items Go to that And find something That's even less expensive But I found This particular device That records cassettes To digital It saves it as a wave A particular format file That you can play On just about anything Well I did that And if you go back To the last podcast You'll hear The amount of skipping that's going on it uh, the earth cut out like some sound like that it sounded just like that and horrible so i found a way to record directly into the computer i had <laughs> this is what happens when you're 55 i have enough various adapters and whatnot in a tote and everything is tangled together like a big spaghetti monster and i just pulled it out and i was kind of pulling on this yanking on that trying not to snap anything Rip anything And I found an adapter That was able to get the cassette uh, Connected to my little mixer That connects to the computer And I was able to get A little bit of this And The last show we did Let's go back with Matthews Let's go go back back with with Matthews Matthews. If you get offended That's the way the cookie crumbles (laughs) Right? Good But It was very It was all skippy stuff That was recorded With this Amazon device but here is the, a better, slightly better version uh, with the new apparatus that I have put together. Like MacGyver. Most Music 197, good afternoon. Mike Matthews stepping in. I'm sitting in for somebody who's stuck in L.A. today. You know, the earthquake and all that. We'll bring you updates on what's going on with that, how Los Angeles is preparing for yet another catastrophe. How many more this year? I don't know. Life is a highway. Tom Cochran. Yes, Tom Cochran, Life is a Highway. That was popular right around the time that we had the big Northridge earthquake. And that is why I was on the radio, because whoever it was was stuck in L.A. So I was able to drive up from Oxnard to Santa Barbara there at Y97 to be on the air. That blows me away. Northridge got hit so hard, the, the mall basically fell apart. I was living in Oxnard with my late mom And we got woken up like at 4 in the morning And it shook It shook like crazy And I had a Like a desk My mom had gotten a Business desk For practically nothing And she said do you want this And I go sure And put it in my room And it had a really hard slate top And I Dove underneath that Because I figured If anything falls on my head I'll have have a chance of surviving Because it's going to get This slate top Is going to absorb the fall So That was fascinating That whole Shake up And shake down And Bob Seger From Beverly Hills Cop 2 What's the cliche of the week? 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 Everybody make some noise! Ah! Bringing to you live from Podcaster Valley Mont Mike's Daily Podcast! What's the cliche of the week? What's the cliche of the week? I can't believe what the hell is this place anyway? <laughs> Jay Giles Band. Baloney. Though that song came out much earlier. Music Y97. I've got to hear Abby's voice. Oh yeah, and there was a lady working there named Abby Bonell that she had a British accent. She was my boss then. Yes. That is new music on Most Music 197 from Luther Vandross and Janet Jackson from the movie Mo Money. That's the best things in life are free. Mike Matthews with you on this Sunday afternoon doing a 50 minute music hour. Oh my gosh! The bottom of the chart. Pretty good songs that never made it on the radio because people didn't think they were worth it. But you know what? They come back up and people start playing them, and it's like, oh, 
Where'd that come from? First of all, I just want to just um, thank everyone for joining us here on this show. This is great. We're going to get to the Mike Matthews New Tunes feud in just a bit, but wanted to also mention that members of Congress are heading for the exits. This from the New York Times on Yahoo. Many citing dysfunction. Eleven are running for the Senate, five for state or local office, one for president of the United States, another is resigning to become a university president, and more and more say they are hanging up their hats in public office altogether. More than three dozen members of Congress have announced they will not seek re-election next year. Some to pursue other offices, many others simply to get out of Washington. Twelve have announced their plans just this month. The wave of lawmakers across chambers and parties announcing they intend to leave Congress comes at a time of breathtaking dysfunction on Capitol Hill, primarily instigated by House Republicans. The House GOP majority spent the past few months deposing its leader, waging a weeks-long internal war to select a new speaker. The News Bleed Section. Right-wing members have rejected any spending, any, any at all, any spending legislation that could come, that could become law and rallied against their new leader for turning to Democrats as his predecessor did to avert a government shutdown. The chaos has Republicans increasingly worried that they could lose their slim House majority next year, a concern that typically prompts a rash of retirements from the party in control. But it's not only GOP lawmakers who are opting to leave. Democrats, too, are rushing for the exits with retirements across parties this year, outpacing those of the past three election cycles. And speaking of elections... Governor DeSantis lands an endorsement. Wine. Well, I like it. The whiny white man wine list. So, yes, he is running for president on the... He wants to... Well, he wants to become the Republican nominee for president. Everybody is saying it is Trump. The numbers seem to bear that out, that Trump will be the candidate. But according to CNN, Bob Vander Plotz a key evangelical leader in Iowa officially announced his endorsement of Ron DeSantis this past week. I'm thrilled to throw my personal endorsement and support behind Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida. He is the CEO and president of the family leader. And he has clashed with former President Donald Trump and urge Republicans to move on from the former president while heaping praise on Ron DeSantis. A longtime GOP power broker, he has thrown his weight behind the eventual winner of the past three Iowa caucuses, not to feature an incumbent Republican president. Micropedia in Zanica. Where Ron DeSantis says, as I have made my way through 98 of Iowa's 99 counties, Iowans have shared what a critical role Bob Vander Plaats plays in engaging Iowa's faith and community in the key battles that matter. His support tells Iowans that they can trust me to fight and win for them. We're thrilled to have Bob and Darla on Team DeSantis and are thankful for their friendship as we've gotten to know them throughout this campaign. What was it I was watching where it had Ron DeSantis, Nikki Haley, and uh, Vivid Viv, 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 Rami? Viv Ramaswamy? Vic. Vic. Ah. Anyway, the three of them. And they're all sitting on the stage answering questions. It wasn't a debate. But they were being all chummy and nice. It's funny. But, you know, when they're up there during a debate, it's all, don't you say my daughter's name in your mouth. It's pretty interesting. And that kind of craziness. And this last thing. 30-year fixed mortgage rates have reached the lowest in over a month. It's not a win for Biden Democrats. This according to the Daily Mail or anyone. Mortgage rates fell for the third consecutive week to their lowest level in more than a month, offering some respite to overstretched home buyers. We were talking about how people are just not buying houses right now. And it's as bad as it was uh, in... 2010. Figures from government-backed lender Freddie Mac show the average rate on a 30-year fixed loan fell to 
0.44%. How far did it fall? How about like a 0.5% of a percent? Yes, because it was 7.5% the previous week. It is little wonder then that sales of previously occupied U.S. homes fell to their slowest pace in more than 13 years in October. Buyers are currently facing one of the least affordable housing markets in recent memory. Two years ago, rates on a home loan were hovering at 3.10%. Yes, five percentage points lower. And that's a lot, that amounts to a lot of cash. So, there. Just wanted to share that with you. Outside a cafe anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley, Tin, look who's here. Hello, Mike Matthews. It's Charlie Schwartz, the job supervisor. Wow, that was all really fascinating, Mike Matthews. Yes, I, I'm glad you enjoyed that. Oh, look who else is here. Hi, Mark. It's Benita the Rodeo Queen. How y'all doing? I brought my horse to the Answer this, Colonel Phil player. Tell you what. What? No one can run against Trump because Trump will trump everybody because his name is a verb. It's as simple as that. Go back and look at your history books. Tell you what. What? Go back. Wait, let's not. Let's go back with Matthews, though. It's look who's here right now as well. Hello, Mac. I make the delicious root beer. Have some on the Thank you. Oh, I will most certainly do that. Thank you. Mmm. Yum. What was in that? Gravy. You know, I wondered where all the gravy went. And now, a big thanks to our sponsor. Squander. All right, let's do this. It's the wonderful, let's go, wait, no, it's the other thing I do. The Mike Matthews New Tunes feud. Here we go. We're, this is where we're going. We're going here, you and I. The first, the first person on the Let's Go Back with Matthew segment is the Portland, it's not a person, it's several people's. Portland Cello Project. The Portland Cello Project. Born out of the relentless winter months of the Pacific Northwest, where Christmas sweaters adorn even the animal statues, this holiday record hits different. The Portland Cello Project, known for their delightful and dedicated performances of modern and classical music, previously taking on the music of Radiohead and having collaborated with the likes of Tao Nguyen. Uh, I think, is that how they say Tao? Oh, is that from Tao and the Get Down, Jump Down, Jump, Jump Back Up Again group? I should know that. I think they're from the Bay Area. Join forces with Prince's new power generation alum, vocal powerhouse, Saida Wright. Oh, I think I remember her. To bring a compliment of uniquely arranged holiday jams. Let's listen to a little bit of their cover of What Child Is This? I'd love to keep that going, but I'm going to get dinged by YouTube. Oh my gosh, Saida Wright. That's right. I I think she's saying, If I could give you diamonds and pearls. She was doing all those cool little vocal parts. Yes. I think that's her. Well, or maybe not. But if I'm right, then that's because I have the music brain. As my friend Masa told me the other day. Well, contestant number two. Do you like that one? Or contestant two, Joseph Shabasin. He has a song called Lost Muska Part. <laughs> this email that came to me, Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. What does hell look like? The introduction of Toy Machine Skateboard Seminal 1996 video, Welcome to Hell. With its pulsing overlay of the stars and stripes on top footage of police officers, businessmen, and fast food service workers would appear to paint hell as the mirage of American exceptionalism. A thick century spanning unreality that may not out- outwardly trade in fire and brimstone. But if you turn your nose to the wind, you'll smell sulfur. What comes up after that scene? Born of or despite of those 
Apparent depictions of damnation would become a cultural touchstone Skateboarding performed at the highest level composed And displayed in a fashion that would influence And endear audiences for decades to come A young Joseph Shabasin felt that impact And he hit rewind on his VH1 uh, VH1 VHS copy of Welcome to Hell hundreds of times in his youth Eat each watch as thrilling as the last So that is what this is Apparently is this uh, Is inspired from his LP Welcome to Hell And I guess the video has Skateboarder Chad Muska in it So it's called Lost Muska Part 1 Let's listen to a little bit <laughs> I guess this is more all about watching the skateboarder doing all these th- tricks and skating off the side of Oh, interesting. Flying through the air, going up and down stairs, suspended in the air by wires. Nope. Nope, he actually caught air. That's amazing. I hope his knees are okay. Here's another one. Hi Mike. Goodbye My Love was written in May of 2020 Right after I'd been laid off from my full-time job of five years I wrote four songs that week Yes, it is another breakup song It follows a fictional tale of a couple Who meet and spend an evening together Just innocently enjoying each other's company And talking all night Then after a while Once they're in a proper relationship Things start falling apart Due to trust and jealousy issues Ooh This is called Goodbye My Love And this is by Michael uh, oh no wait It is by Vicky Von Vicky Let's listen to this Goodbye my love The name of that one Okay Song number four Is by Let's see we got Church Chords Church Chords has a new single She Lays on a Leaf And it says Last month Church Chords announced their debut album Set for release in February The collaborative recording project Led by musician producer Stephen Buono Brings together accomplished musicians From his time spent in Philadelphia New York, Chicago and LA To create music that honors Experimentation and collaboration Let's see, this is a song called She Says on a Leaf by the group Church Chords. Oh, it's She Lays on a Leaf. Did I say that? Wow. Wait, what is this? Hannah Waddington, Waddingham and Jason Sudeikis cover of shallow what? Times I find myself alone for change and in my- <laughs> So Jason is he singing on this? Ah like Lady Gaga and Brandon Cooper. All right, here's the last one. <laughs> okay, vote for that one if you want. Uh, this is Emily Yasina. And this is Trick of the Light. Long Beach, California based singer Emily Yasina announced her seven inch Trick of the Light, Nothing Last, co produced by Rostam. The seven inch will be the first music released by another artist on his own label, Master Projects. Okay, Nothing Last was written after I read Octavia Butler's Parable of the Sower Inspired by Butler's idea of God being change The song started out as a demo written and produced by me And then brought it to Rotsam, Rostam Together we built this song up to its fullest potential Adding live drums by Daniel Haim Oh, Danielle Haim Oh, from uh, the Haim sisters Haim Sisters, rather. Piano by Elise Goldberg and upright bass by Gabe Noel. Ah, okay, here is Emily Asina, Nothing Lasts. Ah, little bells. And it looks 
looks like she's driving around Long Beach or San Pedro in LA. Yes, that definitely is that. Okay, awesome. So which one did you like best? I know, so hard to pick. The Portland Cello Project, Joseph Shabasson, Vicky Von Vicky, uh, the uh, Church Chords, or Emily Asina. You can give me a call at this number. Call Mike at the Cafe Anyway Hotline. Area code 510-228-4640. Will you shut up? Liberty Nation Freedom Foam for All. And with more ways to reach me, it is A. Frank. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.